Wenatchee, Washington, USA. Joe Muhammad has just finished his latest masterpiece, a 13-inch statuette of a man in mid-shuffle, wearing a torn, empty, baby Bjorn, and staring ahead with lifeless eyes. I'm not going to say the war was a good thing. I'm not that much of a sick fuck, but you've got to admit that it did bring people together. My parents never stopped talking about how much they missed the sense of community back in Pakistan. They never talked to their American neighbors, never invited them over, barely knew their names unless it was to complain about loud music or a barking dog. Can't say that's the kind of world we live in now. And it's not just the neighborhood or even the country. Anywhere around the world, anyone you talk to, all of us have this powerful shared experience. I went on a cruise two years ago, the Pan Pacific Line across the islands. We had people from everywhere, and even though the details might have been different, the stories themselves were all pretty much the same. I know I come off as a little too optimistic, because I'm sure that as soon as things really get back to normal, once our kids or grandkids grow up in a peaceful and comfortable world, they'll probably go right back to being as selfish and narrow-minded and generally shitty to one another as we were. But then again, can what we all went through really just go away? I once heard an African proverb, one cannot cross a river without getting wet. I'd like to believe that. Don't get me wrong. It's not like I don't miss some of the things about the old world, mainly just stuff, things I used to have or things I used to think I could have one day. Last week, we had a bachelor party for one of the young guys on the block. We borrowed the only working DVD player and a few pre-war skin flicks. There was one scene where Lusty Canyon was getting reamed by three guys on the hood of this pearl gray BMW Z4 convertible. And all I could think was, wow, they sure don't make cars like that anymore. Tel Aviv, Israel. We finish our lunch as Jürgen Vornbrunn aggressively snatches the bill from my hand. Please, my choice of food, my treat. I used to hate this stuff. Thought it looked like a buffet of vomit. <laughs> my staff had to drag me here one afternoon, these young sabres with their exotic freewheeling tastes. Just try it, you old yecky, they'd say. <laughs> That's what they called me, a yecky. It means tight ass, but the official definition is German Jew. <laughs> they, they were right on both counts. I was in the Kindertransport, the last chance to get Jewish children out of Germany. That was the last time I saw any of my family alive. There is a little pond in a small town in Poland where they used to dump the ashes. The pond is still gray, even a half century later. I've heard it said that the Holocaust has no survivors that even those who managed to remain technically alive were so irreparably damaged that their spirit, their soul, the person they were supposed to be, was gone forever. I'd like to think that's not true. But if it is, then no one on earth survived this war. Denver, Colorado. Todd Wania walks me to the train, savoring the 100% Cuban cigarettes I bought him as a parting gift. Yeah, I lose it sometimes, for a few minutes, maybe an hour. Dr. Chandra told me it was cool, though. He counsels right here at the VA. He told me once that it's a totally healthy thing, like little earthquakes releasing pressure off a of fault. He says anyone who's not having these minor tremors, you really gotta watch out for. It doesn't take much to set me off. Sometimes I'll smell something, or somebody's voice will sound really familiar. Last month at dinner, the radio was playing this song. I don't think it was about my war. I don't even think it was American. The accent and some of the terms were all different, but the chorus. God help me. I was only 19. The chimes announce my train's departure. People begin boarding around us. Funny thing is, my most vivid memory Kind of got turned into the national icon of the victory. He motions behind us to the giant mural. That was us standing on the Jersey River Bank, watching the dawn over New York. We just got the word it was VA Day. 
There was no cheering, no celebration. It just didn't seem real. Peace? What the hell did that mean? I'd been afraid for so long, fighting and killing and waiting to die, that I guess I just accepted it as normal for the rest of my life. I thought it was a dream. Sometimes it still feels like one, remembering that day, that sunrise over the hero city. We hope you've enjoyed this production of World War Z by Max Brooks. Our performers have been Max Brooks as the interviewer, Alan Alda as Arthur Sinclair, Carl Reiner as Jürgen Vorbrunn, Jürgen Prochnow as Philip Adler, Walid Zuader as Saladin Kader, Dean Edwards as Joe Muhammad, Michelle Kolos as Jessica Hendricks, Maz Jobrani as Ahmed Faranakian, Mark Hamill as Todd Wainio, Henry Rollins as T. Sean Collins, Eamon Walker as David Allen Forbes and Paul Redeker, Ajay Naidu as Ajay Shaw, John Turturro as Seriosha Garcia Alvarez, Rob Reiner as The Wacko, J.O. Sanders as Bob Archer, Dennis Boutsikaris as General Travis D'Ambrosia, Becky Ann Baker as Christina Eliopoulos, Steve Park as Kwang Jing Shu, Frank Kamai as Nuri Televaldi and Tomanaga Ijiro, and John McElroy as Ernesto Oguin. Produced and directed by John McElroy and Dan Zitt. Abridgement by Tony Daniel. Executive producer, Dan Zitt. Text copyright 2006, Max Brooks. Production copyright 2006, Random House Inc. All rights reserved. <laughs>